If your mother is narcissistic or has narcissistic personality disorder, there's a high likelihood that she is extremely dysregulated. So, and she has been in the dysregulated state for a really long time and she is not aware of it, has no self-awareness about it. I'm just going to explain to you what it looks like based off trauma-informed care. Because yes, we do like to pathologize people and call them narcissistic or say that they have borderline personality disorder, but the reality is a big part of the way that they act has to do with a dysregulated nervous system. Now, is their behavior okay? No, it is not okay. And I am not condoning the behavior. I am not condoning toxic and abusive behavior. That's why you need to set boundaries. And if you need to go no contact, then go no contact. I'm just going to explain the nervous system a little bit just because it's gonna tie into my story and it'll help you understand like how my relationship with my mother has progressed. Think about when you're dysregulated and think about it this way. You're the Hulk when you're dysregulated, so it's hard for you to get into that executive function of your brain where you have impulse control, where you are able to use logic. When you are not dysregulated and your body's calm, and regulated then you are bruce banner and as bruce banner you have access to that executive function you could talk you could learn you could set goals you have more impulse control right so that's the way that i like to describe it so for some people when they are in that hulk brain when they are dysregulated and they continue to be dysregulated and they do not get out of that state they have what is called social dominant behavior so it brings up a social dominant game that they are able to perceive through nonverbal cues. So if they are in this Hulk brain, they are constantly looking for threats. This either makes them one, competitive and aggressive. Their behavior is more overt. They could lash out, they could be angry, they could be hostile, they could be defensive i.e. does that sound like somebody or they could be more compliant more like a victim more like self-hatred victimization they mitigate so they use more covert behavior they may distance themselves and this looks more like a vulnerable narcissistic mother which means that they're in this constant fight or flight does it make it okay when they do the things that they do it does not make it okay this is just more about understanding the nervous system and why these things happen so when they are in this social dominance game their logic and their reasoning is gone and they have diminished capacity for impulse control. If they are under threat, they perceive that they may be dominated or controlled. So if they feel like they're being dominated and controlled, they will not open up or give out information and they may feel like they are in a straitjacket physically and emotionally. They may also feel that their liberties are being taken away so whenever somebody talks to them and they are, feel like they're threatened they may feel diminished they may feel minimized they may feel disrespected and they are not going to open up and they are not going to be trusting because they feel that somebody is trying to dominate them and restrict them the more deeply that they are in this social dominance game the more tension that this person experiences in the muscles of the body and the more energy that's being pumped in and the more anxiety and the further the body goes into to arouse soul and becomes self-defensive so if you're trying to talk to your mother if you're trying to help her understand if you're trying to show her what she's done to you it is more than likely that she is in this arousal state and she has been for a really long time for somebody who's dysregulated and you could be dysregulated too i mean if you were raised by a narcissistic mother then you more likely are dysregulated you haven't learned how to regulate yourself if we're looking from a trauma-informed place and I know it's hard to get this to this place, especially because of the things that your mother may have done to you. And you don't have to ever get to this place. This is just me talking about it in a trauma-informed way. It's hard to even think about being nice to your mother because she's so dysregulated and she's insecurely attached. So when you are dysregulated and insecurely attached, what you need is a safe haven and a secure base, which means is you need to feel safe in a relationship. You need to see that if you act based on the way that you coped in the past, that you're still gonna be accepted and cared for, you start to see that relationships are safe and you start feeling more secure and you start being yourself more, you start being more authentic. People could learn these things through modeling, through the mirror neurons. There's, you know, even as an adult, you could do co-regulation with narcissism in general. Like we tend to get so caught up in like, why did she do this or why did she do that? Did she do that to like, you know, piss me off? Did she do that to do this? Eventually it just doesn't matter and you need to focus on yourself. You know, she's toxic, she's manipulative and you don't feel good around her. Okay, what are you gonna do? 
Are you going to set boundaries? Are you going to start working on yourself? We already have spent a big part of our lives just focusing on our mothers. It's important to move past that eventually and not like look into every single thing that they do because then you're still living for her. Why did she do this? Why did she do that? Etc. When you get to a place like, I don't even care why she did that. Or you see it in a way where it's like, oh, that's nice of her. You're like life changes. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any other questions that you want answered in this type of format, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.